Y'all, thank you so much for coming out today for this celebration, this announcement of something very important for our state. My name is Senator Melissa Wintrow and I represent District 19. And it is a true honor to be invited today to introduce Terry as she makes her very important announcement. And you know, I was thinking about what to say today. I didn't write any prepared words, but I thought about Brene Brown. And she, she is a counselor, a social worker who wrote a book about daring greatly. And she encourages us to think about not sitting on the sidelines, but going all in. Just like Theodore Roosevelt's speech years ago, with the person in the arena fighting hard, it is better to be that person than the one on the sidelines judging. And I think Terry has dug deep in her heart and her mind and her soul about this decision. And for those of us who run for office, we know it is a sacred day when we finally make the decision and say, yes, I'll do it. Because we know ahead of us is a lot of work, but also that we are here to represent the voices of those around us, to bring forward the voices that haven't always been heard. And I know from Terry, being a native Idahoan, she's born and raised here. She understands the heart and soul of this state. And as I talked to her, she said, from the sidelines, it is not a pretty picture. Idaho deserves better, and we deserve somebody in that office who legitimizes it, who gives it credibility, somebody who comes to this, this office with the heart and soul of problem solving, of finding what matters to most Idahoans and not being stuck in the posturing and the stances and the political theater. Terry comes here as an attorney who knows the law and the Constitution and knows how to get things done. So it is an honor to announce and to introduce her as she makes her announcement, excuse me, for this very special day and the commitment she has made today for this state. So please welcome Terry to the podium and welcome her warmly. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Melissa. I really appreciate it, Senator Wintrow. It is an honor to be here with you today. It is an honor to be with such a true leader for Idaho as Senator Wintrow is a true leader for Idaho. Thank you to my family and friends who are joining me here today. And thank you especially to my team who is going to help me on this journey to November of 2022. Today, I am officially announcing my candidacy to become the next Lieutenant Governor of the state of Idaho. I am not a politician. I've never been a politician. I'm a small business owner. I'm a volunteer. I'm a wife and I'm a mother. I'm running because I have a vision for Idaho, a vision of the Idaho I was born in, that I was raised in, and the Idaho where I chose to raise my children. These past few years have been hard for all of us and for our state and for especially our country. It's time for change. It's time for unity, not division. It's time for healing and growing. And it's time for new leadership. Yes. We are gathered here at the Wasma Center for Human Rights in the Anne Frank Memorial. I chose to announce my candidacy here because my vision of Idaho matches the vision and the values and the mission of this center. The young Anne Frank believed in the good in people, even in the worst of times. Her voice has been heard across an entire generation. She had a voice of hope and a voice of reason. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor because right now Idaho needs a voice of reason, yes. a voice for change and a voice for hope. It's time Idahoans start voting for leaders who actually have their interests at heart. For many years, I believed that the elected leaders in Idaho shared my values and that they genuinely cared about my well-being and the well-being of my family. Over the past few years, that belief has been absolutely shattered. I needed to be a voice for this, a voice for change, 
because like Senator Wintrow said, I can no longer sit on the sidelines and watch the Idaho I know and love yes. go away. I needed to be a voice for all of Idahoans, a voice of reason, a voice of humility, yes. a voice of change. It's time. As Lieutenant Governor, I will use my voice and stand up for the dignity and freedoms of all Idahoans. I believe in civil rights, and I will be a champion for the people of Idaho, ensuring that all of their rights are protected. I will support equal rights, equal justice, and equal opportunity for all. We're living in a time when our rights are being challenged. I don't want to see a day where the rights I have fought, where my predecessors have fought so hard to be taken away. I am watching the rights in Idaho being taken away. My daughter deserves the same freedoms and rights that were afforded to me my entire lifetime. Yes. My son deserves to have an education that is not censored, that is based on factual history. Every Idahoan deserves to be treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their race, ethnicity, age, religious affiliation, sexual orientation, or gender identity. We are all human, and we deserve to be treated as such. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor because I'm not afraid of using my voice for change. I'm not afraid to step out and say, it's time. I believe in the United States and the Idaho constitutions. I understand them, I've read them. I strongly support the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, and the 14th Amendment. Those are very important for Idahoans. Idaho has been long-standing known to protect the rights of its citizens and its people. Idaho will not be able to function without those rights protected. I stand up for the right to privacy, the right and freedom of religion, and the freedom of the press, the right to bear arms, equal protection under the law no matter what. As Lieutenant Governor, I will use my voice on the Idaho Land Board to protect and preserve our public lands in the state of Idaho and for the use of all of the people. As a native Idahoan, I have spent a great deal of time in the public lands from hiking, camping, fishing, whitewater rafting, skiing, and recreating. My children and I, my family and I, we spent countless days and hours and nights in this wonderful wilderness that we have right in our backyards. We must protect and preserve that for future generations, for our generation and everyone that comes after us. I vow to protect Idaho's public lands for all of Idaho's people. Education is a cornerstone of our society. For too long, Idaho has failed its children. I am committed to put the education of our children first. Public education is critical to ensure that all Idahoans have an equal opportunity to learn, and to get a head start in life. In order to be a successful state, we must first have successful citizens. By providing our children with a first-rate education, we are ensuring that Idaho will have a strong and viable workforce. That workforce will stay and build a better Idaho. I support public education. I support pre-K education, full-time kindergarten, and full access to public education all across Idaho, whether you're in a rural area or an urban area. Funding is critical to support strong education. I will fully support funding Idaho's public education system for our teachers, for our students, for our rural schools. Every person in Idaho should have access to education without restrictions based on where they live or how much money they have. It's time to invest in our children. They are our future. They are the future of Idaho. The past year and a half has been rough for all Idahoans. The pandemic hit small businesses hard. I'm a small business owner. I understand the pain. As Lieutenant Governor, I will not deny that the pandemic happened yes. or that we have still not made it to the other side. I will, however, do everything I can to ensure that small businesses can prosper going forward. As a small business myself, I am familiar with the struggles that uh, the owners face, and I will use my leadership as a voice for them to start the recovery process to help all Idahoans going forward. I know I have an uphill battle and I'm in a deeply divided state and an equally divided country. I'm looking forward to traveling across the Idaho to share my vision with my fellow Idahoans. 
I'm running for two lieutenant governor because I believe we can do better for our children, for our environment, and for our businesses. It's time to put people of Idaho over politics. It's time to elect leaders who care about Idaho, not just the next campaign headline. It's time to stop the political theater and it's time to start investing in the people of Idaho. It's time to do better. We can do better. We will do better. I encourage everyone to visit www.terryforidaho.com. Come out, sign up, volunteer, make a donation, make a contribution. And as we make this journey to November 20, 2022, I look forward to hearing from everybody because what I want to do is be that voice that voice for Idaho, hope, reason, humility, and change. It's time. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Why the lieutenant governor? The lieutenant governor does not serve on the land board. The lieutenant governor's only official duties are presiding over the Senate and doing whatever else the governor is on. I appreciate the question, thank you. Um, why Lieutenant Governor? Because like I said, time is now to be that voice for change. And if there were ever a race that were the hub of political theater, a position that you say doesn't have any influence, I beg to differ. I've, I think we've seen over the last year what the Lieutenant Governor can do. I think the first thing I will do as Lieutenant Governor is talk to the Governor. I will commit to work with whoever is the governor, not against him. And so while I appreciate I won't be sitting on the land board, I will have an influence and I will have a voice and I will portray that voice as a voice for change and a voice for Idaho. Building off of Betsy's question, uh, since there's really limited powers and responsibilities for the lieutenant governor, how do you, I guess, hope to um, influence whatever change you mentioned education, you mentioned preserving public lands, things like that. How do you hope to accomplish those goals when you kind of just have soft power in a lot of realms? Thank you for the question. I do appreciate it. The soft power that you speak of uh, fails to recognize that my voice is actually quite portrayed. Mm -hmm. So um, I honestly believe that when people start speaking up, change will happen. When you start taking the extremes to the normal, I think change will happen. I plan to do that. I plan to use my voice even in a smaller role of lieutenant governor. That doesn't mean my voice will have any less influence on the people of Idaho, and that's how I plan to use it. If we can talk about kind of the elephant in the room. <laughs> on the Republican side, there are already three announced candidates in this race. They're all well-known um, Republican politicians statewide. How do you think that that race impacts your run, and how will you respond to it? It is an elephant in the room, very big one. And I've been watching their political theater go on for several months. And frankly, that was one of the deciding factors in why I was going to run as a Democrat for a Lieutenant Governor. Because again, when only one voice has the podium, you only hear one side. And they right now are having their own primary battle and political theater. What I plan to do, however, is go out and talk to actual Idahoans and bring the actual issues to the table that Idahoans care about. They care about their public lands. They care about education. They care about their property taxes. They don't care about um, protests and critical race theory and issues that really have no impact on their daily lives. They care about issues that matter to them. And I'm going to be the one that's going to be talking about those issues with them. Uh, I'm Ruth Brown. I work for Idaho Public Television. You mentioned critical race theory. Of course, the sitting lieutenant governor and uh, a Republican, Representative Giddings, who could be your challenger should you make it to the general, uh, have developed this task force uh, to, I guess, examine indoctrination in public schools, despite the board uh, disputing that that is happening in public schools. How would you approach the Board of Education to work with them uh, to improve education or some of the, the commentary you had about improving the public schools? Absolutely, thank you for the question. Well, first, calling it a task force, I think is, is probably a mischaracterization. To me, it's political theater. 
because frankly this task force is not doing anything other than introducing the boogeyman into public education that quite frankly doesn't exist. The first time I heard of anything related to critical race theory, I was a third year student in law school. They're not teaching these in school, they're teaching history in school. And I believe that it is important to continue teaching history in school. And I believe it's up to the boards of education to decide, not the legislature, to decide what my children will learn. Those teachers are very well educated themselves, and I believe and I trust them to teach my children. I don't trust a task force meant for political theater to guide and, and force any type of issues on my children. My children deserve to learn the facts, they, learn, they deserve to learn science, and they deserve to learn the actual and factual history. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I know it's not unprecedented, but uh, if you were to win with a Republican winning the governor's seat, do you feel that that working relationship would, would uh, that you could deal with that working relationship being with the party? Thank you for the question. Yes, absolutely I do. And the reason being is because I've worked with Republicans my whole life. I'm an attorney. I work with the, I've, I've been at Capitol Hill. I've done everything that um, working with Republicans in Idaho, that's who you work with. And like I said, right out of the gate, my first question was, I'll talk to him or her, whoever wins that seat. I will talk to them. I will use my opportunities to not work against them, but to work with them. Find those common values that we can agree on and work on those. There's no reason why we can't work together. Perfect example is Senators Rich and Crapo just agreed to pass the infrastructure bill. We can do bipartisanship. It is possible. It used to be the norm. I want to get back to that. I want to get back to the reasonableness and the norm. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your time today.